Anyone, and I mean anyone, can take a plain white box and turn it into an architectural masterpiece. The best part is it takes less than 60 seconds to create endless designs. But you see, there's a problem. Well, actually, there's a few problems. But before we get into those, let me explain what the hell is going on here. This is Graphisoft's official AI plugin for Archicad 27 on both Mac and PC. It uses the power of Stable Diffusion XL to create AI-powered images. All you have to do is type in a few words and within seconds, you have inspiration. But like I said, there's a problem and installation is one of them. Let's dive in so I can show you exactly how to install this plugin. Finally, I'll teach you everything you need to know to make great AI-powered architecture. Let's go. To start using Archicad's AI visualizer, first of all, you need to download and install this plugin. Like I mentioned, it is an incredibly challenging and painful procedure, but we're gonna get there together today. First things first, you need to come to this Graphisoft AI visualizer online. I'll link it down below so you can go straight to it. You need to come to the download section and press download. Of course, Windows and Mac options are available. Once you've signed in, it's gonna allow you to download it. If you come to the installation instructions on the right hand side, it will also provide additional installation instructions. For Windows, it is ridiculously easy. All you have to do is download the zip and copy and paste a few folders. For Mac, on the other hand, unfortunately, there is a few pages that we need to get through. However, don't be scared off. This is relatively simple. So first things first, let's zoom out a little bit and you'll need to download this package. All you need to do is press command space and type in terminal and it will open up your terminal for you. Now, generally, these instructions are relatively correct, except for the very first instruction that tells you to copy and paste this section right here and paste it into your terminal. If you do that, paste it directly into your terminal, nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna sit waiting for hours on end. What you actually need to do is figure out where this code came from and then copy and paste it directly from the website. Again, I will link the actual website where this code comes from directly in the description below. So to make the Arcad AI Visualizer work and install properly, we're basically installing Homebrew on our Mac systems. And the easiest way to find that direct code is of course to go to the Homebrew website. To be able to install it successfully, come to this website, find the direct copy icon for the main link, which appears perfectly identical to the one on the installation instructions, but just doesn't seem to work for some reason. So make sure you copy it directly from Homebrew, go to your terminal, paste it in, and then after that, you're going to be able to follow these instructions step by step. I won't bore you with this because it's relatively easy. All it's asking you to do is press enter, type in your computer's password, press enter again, wait a little while. It does take a decent amount of time to download because obviously it is a relatively large download itself and then copy and paste a few files over. First, it asks you to copy and paste the SD web UI file directly into your Arcad 27 folder. So if you come to your applications, Graphisoft, Archicad 27, you just paste it into this main folder here. Again, it's about 20 gig, so you will need a decent amount of space to install this. After that, it'll ask you to drag and drop this run sh file over from the folder directly into your terminal window. Now, of course, I don't have my terminal window open, but all you need to do is drag, drop, and let it do the rest itself. Once again, it's gonna take a bit of time to install but once you're done with that entire procedure, it'll showcase this code here in the center. Mine looks a little bit something similar to that. Not entirely, but all we're really looking for is model loaded in X amount of seconds and you're good to go. Once you've installed this script, we can jump into Archicad 27 and start using the Archicad visualizer. If for whatever reason you guys are having some serious problems installing the Arcad Visualizer, jump on the Discord chat. It is linked down below completely for free and we'll be able to answer some of these questions hopefully for you along the way. Now, AI is a fantastic tool, but without clear direction, you could waste thousands of hours designing a project and get absolutely nowhere. That's why I've designed the DIY Architectural Brief for architects around the world. It ensures your client's projects have a clear direction from day one. That means if you're using AI, you can pull keywords directly from the brief to help guide the AI itself. Over my career, I've witnessed the transformative power of a well-crafted brief. It's the compass that guides your project, the blueprint 
of your client's vision. Without it, you're sailing blind into a sea of escalating costs and directionless design. Please don't leave your career to chance. Swing by my website linked down below and secure your DIY architectural brief today. Once it's all installed, we can then jump into ArchiCAD 27. Now, it doesn't pop up like a regular plugin. It doesn't have any toolbars. It doesn't have any windows. You need to come up to window, palettes, and make sure AI visualizer appears in your actual palette to know that you've installed it properly. The AI visualizer works best of course, in a 3D window. So if we were to simply create a mesh tool, let's come to our side, create a big box, and then create a large square in the middle. Let's go 50 meters by six meters, just a very simple plain box. Let's make it four meters tall. Let's paint it white, press okay, and let's go into 3D. So right now we have a very, very plain, very boring box. And we might just be stuck for inspiration. We might not know what the hell we're gonna do, but we know we want it to be a nice, beautiful, long house. We wanna set up our actual ArchiCAD visualization and scene however we want that final result to look. So if we're doing an external shot front on, if we're doing side on, we wanna leave the actual camera angle exactly like we wanna showcase it in the visualizer. So let's start maybe with a human perspective somewhere from one side. It also works perfectly with interiors as well. After that, we'll go back to our window, our palette and open up our visualizer. Let's just keep the exact same prompt. Again, AI is really bad at replicating the same thing over and over again. So it doesn't matter how many times you press generate, it'll always do something new. For the purpose of this, I'm happy with a very, very basic prompt. We can change it as we dive deeper into this video. The shape fidelity basically understands understands how closely you want to mimic the actual shape. The 80% means I'm happy for it to be a box and you can truncate a little bit, but if I need it to be exactly as per the shape, I'd smash that up to 100. Otherwise, if I wasn't fussed at all, what kind of shapes it was going to throw at me, maybe I just needed some real inspiration, we could put that to zero as well. In this instance, let's leave it at 80% just so we can create something relatively similar like you saw at the start of the video. Image size will depend on how long this actually takes to render out and generate. So the larger you make this image, the longer it's gonna take. Purpose of this, I'm happy with a smaller image size. The iterations basically is going to define the exact precision of the AI generated model. So if you want a really, really intricate, perfectly detailed model, bring that up to 45, maybe even all the way to 50 and it will take a little bit longer to do it, but it will produce a much better result. So let's leave it at 45 seconds, see how long this takes, and we can then move on to prompt strength. Prompt strength is utilizing the actual information we've provided to the AI as the basis of what it's going to create. So if I put modern residential home, glass, concrete, tropical landscaping, it's going to try to find all of those things at about 35% accuracy, which means it might throw some timber in there. It might throw some different materials that I haven't actually specified at 75%, but it will predominantly use those. If I drag that all the way down to 25, it will do whatever it wants. It gets pretty wild when you drop at 25 and relatively innovative. So if you're really looking for some inspiration, just drop it all the way to 25, drop your precision down to zero at 25 as well and then you're gonna be able to churn through this quicker. Let's leave that at 75 just to see what we can actually produce. The local engine, we don't have to touch any of this. Start high VRAM mode as well. It's gonna take a little bit more power. So hopefully you have the capacity to turn this on. If you don't, you can obviously leave it off. First, we need to start the actual AI engine. Now, if you hit generate first, it will change the screen and tell you that there's an error. So we need to hit start AI engine first. This does take about 60 seconds every time and we'll start a new terminal window. If you press the close button, it will show you the terminal window automatically. And once it is finished running through that code, you're gonna be able to click back on ArchiCAD. And then finally, you're gonna be able to press the beautiful generate button. So we've pressed that generate button. It basically just says generating image for a good 45 seconds up to five minutes, depending on the settings, the precision, that you actually set up these settings to. So if you want it to go quicker, again, just slide these sliders down as much as you can. But otherwise, I'll see you guys back in about a minute. Well, this time it has generated an incredibly different image to what we've actually provided and what we've said to do. And it's predominantly based on the slider settings we've used. So this image here, I don't love it. I think it's it's nice, it's okay. It's exceptionally well rendered out from a box, but it's not at all what we were looking for. So maybe let's drop our iterations back down to 25 and press the generate button again. Let's see what it can come up with a second time around. This time it's come up with something a little bit more alike to the actual rectangle box that we've provided it as a starting base. And 
it isn't bad. It's done a relatively decent job at creating a very basic glass concrete render. If we wanted to save that image, we could simply hit the save button, save it anywhere we like on our desktop and just press save. It will export a very small image because that's what we set it up to, but that is the finished render as one example. Now, obviously you'll see that there's a few issues like right over here, there's a small issue. It's very wobbly along this top roof. It isn't nice and straight like it's supposed to be. There's a tree half growing into our building, half growing out, and it's not perfect. But when we look at it relatively quickly, it looks like a half decent image. But when we stare at it for a long period of time, we will notice a lot of faults. Now let's say we wanted to make something a little bit more holiday themed. With Christmas coming up for some people around the world, we might be wanting to turn this into something different. So. Let's wrap it around the front again. Let's reopen our visualizer and let's change our prompt. This time we'll go ultra modern architectural home, timber, glass and concrete facade, Christmas lights and Santa Claus on roof. Now this could end horribly wrong for us. I have no idea what it's gonna generate, but let's find out what we might be able to produce if we're looking for a little bit more of a holiday themed render that we might be able to present potentially on social media or to our clients. Well, it definitely generated an ultra modern architectural home with timber, glass and concrete, and it's beautiful. I quite like it. It's not too bad at all. There is no Christmas lights that I can see in this image. There is no Santa Claus on the roof. Unfortunately, when we get into those nitty gritty architectural details that actually make architectural houses a home, we just don't get them with the Stable Diffusion XL plugin for ArcCAD. Now, if we were to try one more additional render, let's say we want to try something that's been inspired by Joe Adsed here in Australia. He's got a beautiful cliffhanger home where it's a very simple two box shape, massive cantilever across and some curves, some arches, something slightly different. So now we clearly have two volumes stacked on top of each other. We have this beautiful cantilever up the top. I haven't gone into too much detail. So let's see what it can actually produce. If I was to once again, go front on, make sure we see that cantilever. To be able to do that, maybe we even extend the mesh a little bit further and show some hotspots to show that it is a cliff. There we go. Now we have a falling piece of terrain that we can zoom all the way out in make sure it's clearly obvious that we've got a beautiful cantilever over there. Come back to our window, our palette, AI visualizer. Let's get rid of our timber feature, glass and concrete only. And let's also get rid of our Christmas lights in this instance. We'll go large cantilever with curved glass elements. Hit that generate button and let's see what inspiration we can get. Oh, Jesus, okay. Once again, it's gone way off base, designed a four story architectural home with a large cantilever, fantastic, but it hasn't used any of the actual shapes that we provided. That's probably because our shape fidelity is too low. We'd have to increase that to 100% and try once again. Definitely more on theme with this image with what we're trying to actually articulate. It looks like a bunch of shipping containers stacked together with a bit of glass in them, but overall it's put it in a meadow. It's put some beautiful hills behind it. It looks actually quite nice from a general render perspective. The architecture is horrible, but it's done a decent job. And that's the overall theme of this ArcCAD AI visualizer. It's there to help inspire you in your ideas and your designs but definitely not to actually inform the design itself. It's getting better every single day that we try and use this system and it's definitely improving every single week. So maybe in a few more years, we might have some serious improvements in this technology, but for now, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about, except a great resource for some incredible inspiration. Anyway, that's all from me team. My name's David Tomich, and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more weekly content.